नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू दिस एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ सत्तालॉजी डी बंकिंग मिथालॉजी सत्तालॉजी मीन साइंस ऑफ ट्रुथ स्टडी ऑफ ट्रुथ अपोजिट ऑफ दैट इज मिथालॉजी व्हिच मीन साइंस और स्टडी ऑफ एक लाइफ और इमेजिनेशन डोंट फॉरगेट टू जॉइन आवर लिटरेचर फेस्टिवल कमिंग अप इन अगस्त एंड आई विल सी देयर ऑल ऑफ यू देयर विद मोर देन 28 लीडिंग ऑथर्स अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड इन यूएसए इन सैन डिएगो द मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल सिटी ऑफ यूएसए आई हैव वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट टुडे Major General Harsh Kakkar, and I love him for his candor, and he's a golfer. So, without delay, let us welcome General Harsh Kakkar. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So, we have a common passion. You know, we both golf, so we have a common passion there. And I was very glad to hear that you are a regular player, not just people who go and call for Italy. On the whole one and samosa on the whole two, so, but you're regular player. Uh, so, pehle, uh, can you put your camera a little bit below, sir, if you can? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Now. Perfect. Perfect. Your sound is good, and and viewers also. If you find my sound good, just let me know. Text me there, and and we'll take care of it. Ah, jo ye jo abhi US ka 1962 me crisis hua tha, 61 me, when President Kennedy was in power. Soviet crisis, Soviet Cuba crisis happened, and the Americans, Soviet Union, was deploying nuclear weapons over there in Cuba, and the Americans responded. And while this was going on, China invaded India. Same time, the same incidents. In fact, uh, when the Soviet operation was going on in Cuba, uh, somebody informed President Kennedy that China has attacked India. That's what happened over there. So, do you think that today's situation sees in that way? Is it like that? Apo? See, uh, a number of things have changed. Firstly, India is not the India of '62. Secondly, there were a lot of warnings coming in from the late '50s, which Pandit Nehru refused to believe. He had his own views in China. and he believed that in case india is a peaceful nation the others will respond in kind he was an idealist not a realist now that is where there was a major loss his reaction only began post the 62 war taking off and then there were knee jerk reactions now these further aggravated the situation Now, India in '62 and India of today are vastly different. There's immense amount of capabilities. You've not, I mean, in terms of Galwan and the incidents that followed in 2020, you've stalled them. You've created within the Chinese a sort of a fear that the chances of success are not 100%. at the same time you built up immense amount of infrastructure that is one part as far as we are concerned we have the capabilities we have the in depth inputs of what is happening across so you have you are a changed nation with a very different leadership today which is not going to back down and which knows what it needs to do therefore you've gone ahead Now look at China. China has got multiple issues which it needs to handle simultaneously in the next couple of years. Taiwan, the incidents as far as or the uh, islands in the South China Sea or the East China Sea with Philippines and Japan. It's got its own dispute on with Vietnam as far as the uh, the. easy z is concerned and the maritime border it's got a dispute with india here now if and when china is to act maybe 2024 maybe 25 maybe 27 whenever wherever it's going to act it has to be sure of 100% success it cannot i repeat it cannot take a step forward and fail if it takes a step forward and fails the myth of china as a superpower 
the myth of China as being the number two nation or the only one challenging the US collapses. So therefore, we've got to look at China from its own entire perspective. If it's going to look, is it going to look towards India or is it going to look elsewhere where it is easier? So it is this that we need to consider in the overall perspective rather than saying that he's going to look towards India because this is where he's going to have the maximum of problems. And if you remember the comment yesterday by the US uh, Pacific commander, when he says that we have the ability to heat up the Taiwan Straits to the level that China will find it very difficult. And that will give us reaction time to come to the aid of Taiwan. So if you look at it from all directions, China has got to be very careful when it takes a call. Today, India does not need help. In 62, India needed backing. It had no weapons. It had no ammunition. It did not even have winter clothing. All that came in from the US. Today, it is almost on its own. It doesn't need anything. No, great point. Because we keep hearing the, the Chinese media and also the Western media. There is a scare to create kya in the American media also. That China is a big military player in the region. And sometimes, occasionally we hear Pacific Com, PACOM coming out that we can make it unlivable for uh, for you China. So this is a very surprise statement actually. When I saw that, uh, I was so shocked. Ki how can they, how is, a, who has got the guts now? Somebody from the top must have told them to say like that. But at the same time, you, you know, looking at the individual uh, Navy personnel or Navy commander in American force, because I live in Navy town. So here we see everyone is somewhere in the Navy. So there you see the confidence is different. But how do you, how do you now, like if you see, is there a, is there a game plan of China because it is collapsing internally or there's challenges within to create problems with India? What do you say? See, China will not look to create problems with India unless it's very clear that it's able to succeed, which does not appear to be so. We've got to realize that there are wars going on, whether it's Russia, Ukraine, whether it's Israel, Gaza. None of these have involved two nuclear powers. It's involved a single nuclear power versus the other. The point is that's how they're conven continuing conventional for a prolonged period of time. What will be the impact if two nuclear powers are involved? How long before the threshold is crossed? At some stage, there would be a warning. And it's not the question of where you're going to target. But can that be risked or will it be localized? See, there are multiple issues for which every scenario you paint can be different. Now, as far as Taiwan is concerned or the Philippines is concerned, it's a nuclear power versus a non-nuclear. So there is a difference in scenario. A strategy between India and Pakistan, how far deep can you afford to go in before Pak loses its balance and you know you can go on to the nuclear threshold. Those are debatable issues on all sides. Will China attempt something and once it's pushed back, is it willing to accept failure? Will the current CCP survive if it fails? And will they accept hundreds of body bags coming in? India can. Can China with a single child policy? You create, you cancel the policy, but that hasn't changed anything on ground. So there are so many issues for them to consider. Will Taiwan be easier? Will the Philippines be even easier? After all, there's something they've got to show, they've got to show. But will the Philippines draw in the US? So that is why there is that sort of a tension filled Asia as of now. If I look at all the conflict zones in the world, one party is the West. All of them. Whether it's South Korea, North Korea, 
Philippines, China, West is with uh, America, USA is with Philippines. You take any country, one country is the West. Any any conflict zone, Africa, either France or US versus the local natives. It's always so who is, there. So who is the real enemy of peace? <laughs> It's everywhere. I mean, today that is where the situation is across. There are disputes, disputes reign across the board. So, how do you how do you see the situation? Like, uh, uh, we are talking about security of USA. Also, where the we sometimes we hear, and and this is the actual reason why most Americans are confused by the American media itself, most Americans, you know, you see all the reports They're increasingly questioning American defense in social media, right from Tucker Carlson to all these people. See, as far as the US is concerned, it's never fought a war on its soil except Pearl Harbor and England. Everything else has been away. Now, the point is, Today, you've created your structures to fight away with limited structures for their own soil. And the fact is, it's an isolated uh, uh, continent, so it's unlikely for anything to happen. So therefore, the security within is far better, which is why the homeland security today has maximum powers in continental US. True. Pearl Harbor incident, we all know the papers are out that how Japan was given a carrot to attack and then Japan did attack and then the Pearl Harbor happened and the US came in 1945. I said, in today's situation, exactly today's situation, how do you see these, these election interference in India and do you think the military powers like China and the West combined did something in India? Do you think that way? See, there has been interference, there is no doubt. There is a wonderful report by Disinfo Lab. The report lists it out very clearly. The interference has been the, uh, I mean, the publication of articles have been largely in Western media. That has not truly infect, uh, influenced the local populace. The themes that were being played up in the election against the ruling dispensation were to a large extent pumped in from outside. The caste census was the task of the French uh, expert on India, the name is slipping my mind. Uh, he is the one who wrote extensively on the caste census, which was very heavily played up. The aspect about uh, the constitution or things being changed were also to some extent pumped in. And these did have relevance. Now, as far as who's concerned, there were initially a few government com uh, com uh, comments, whether it was Germany or the US, when Kejriwal got arrested. A warning was sent by the government of India, everything cool. So government interference possibly was not there. Canada definitely through the Sikh community which is based there or the pro-Khalistani community in Canada was trying to influence its counterparts in India. And that influence has had some utility. How far? I wouldn't want to comment. But there's been some evidence of that happening. As far as China is concerned, we are well aware of uh, Neville Shingle. Neville Roy Shingal, who is basically in touch with the Chinese Communist Party and has been involved in India in funding News Lake, News Click, and is under investigation in India. Definitely, he would have been involved in some form, the inputs of which will flow over time. But there is no way that there hasn't been an influence attempt by China. What has actually influenced the voters? has been themes which possibly have not flowed from within. But the issues that ultimately uh, landed up were nothing external. They were internal issues which influenced the voters. India has always voted in terms of caste, creed and religion basis. It's always been there. In fact, political parties choose candidates to meet 
the sort of grouping within that area. But to enhance the divide and to split the votes going, the themes have come in from outside. How much funding has come in is very difficult to say now until the final inputs do flow at some stage. But as of now, nothing, nothing to say. So there has been an attempt. It's more been from individual groups or, or people. I mean, the latest comment by Soros two, three days back that he's pulling out all his investment from India is an indicator that what he wanted to achieve, he possibly got part of it. But then let's accept one fact. Influencing or attempting to interfere is a global phenomenon in democracies across the world. Canada says that India is the second largest threat to its democracy after China. The US accuses Russia and China of interference. And let's face it, it is something which is a global phenomenon. So howling over it will actually achieve nothing because no matter how much you try and curtail in some form or the other, there will be an attempt to influence favorable people to come into power. Then those who affected the influence have got something to gain. If you remember uh, Putin saying, I'd prefer Trump in the White House or I prefer Biden. Now a comment like that definitely has an impact. Plus, of course, on social media, the hundreds of handles, the thousands and thousands of handles that are created and later on uh, shut down are all indicators of attempts to influence. And that's a global phenomena. So, especially in a democracy, and it has to go through. In this election in USA, there's plan, the amount of money that will be spent or being spent right now, as we speak, is $15.6 billion. That is what it will be always. And that is, and the expenditure will be high and the attempts to influence will be high. The Another aspect I want to highlight is like we are all supposedly the followers of Chanakya. Chanakya says that if the foreign governments who are enemies to you, you have to change their governments by hook or crook, by even creating significant disturbances in the foreign countries. And he lists out very specific rules of engagement. Now, the we are supposed to be the home of Chanakya and we talk, we have Chanakya Puri also, in which is a diplomatic enclave in, in New Delhi. But hardly we seem to follow any Chanakya's logic. Now here, you know, the way what I understand from you right now, I don't know, please correct me. Uh, you know, I would like to seek your correction there. Ki. Are we taking it as very normal that the foreign countries can influence? No, uh, we are not taking it. No, we're not taking it as normal. But what I'm saying is when you find every democracy objecting that there is an attempt to influence. So one, I feel that since you are, since every democracy is objecting and there are attempts in all democracies, I think this should be the new normal, especially in the age of social media. Because no matter how much you try and curtail, it will happen. And social media is curtail. You will not be able to restrict it. You know, social media is database driven, and most of these databases are controlled from the companies where these companies originate, from the countries companies Correct. originate. Like YouTube that we are speaking on is an American platform. A spirit is an American platform and can be used Correct. at will under American laws. Facebook, Instagram, any platform. A simple, example, a simple example is Facebook or I think not Facebook, uh, Instagram permitted you. We are, we are looking at Riyaz, uh, at Rafa or whatever that famous sentence was going. Our eyes are on Rafa. But when the same time someone put out our eyes are on Riyasi, Instagram banned it. Rafa was permitted, Riyasi was not. So not it is how, where the originator decides. And, and, and so do you think we should be okay with that? What do you say? 
not that but no matter but unless you try and stop the the interference it's only going to increase so you must work to stop it but expecting to say that there will not be is impossible it will be there so that means social media is a 0.5 warfare which bipin rawat ji was saying 2.5 information warfare is always there and this social media so tell me one thing like in the in if we talk about this 0.5 warfare in which political narratives came from the west in in elections and now the american elections are on so what will be the 0.5 warfare for them there will be interference there will be a decision as to whom which nation wants to bring in uh-huh. and there will be a desire because after all each one is looking at geopolitics from their own angle their own national interests whomever you want you want to get it you will get it you will try to at least tiktok created most of the college rights in us tiktok is a chinese yes. brand and uh, the ceo is the, the company is based out of singapore correct the chinese ceo which sits in us and uh, they had to call they were called for congressional hearing and it was a public interview and i heard it live on c span and uh, but there is no such system in india calling american ceos for hearing in the congress because most of the you did part- not call them. in india the system is clear when uh, when india wanted to warn twitter as well as facebook it called this the information minister or the information ministry the concerned uh, bureaucrat summoned their heads and they and they were told and immediately there was a change it was very evident but here when there are so many of them sprouting you can try and contain control restrict but the numbers sprouting are immense i mean when i was commenting during the elections this found of the sort of counters that i kept getting and suddenly when the elections finished the whole lot of people disappeared so you are aware that these are fake accounts created but that happens so one has to say no matter how much you try no matter how much the government tries there will be an instance so let's leave it at that and let's accept the fact so so i'll ask you one comparable scenario how will a military intelligence take care of clutter or noise which we call it in a military communication space which is confusing our signals how will you curtail it see that is uh, first part these have got very restricted users it's not something for the public and with restricted users you know exactly where it's coming from what you are looking at today is a public platform where there is no restriction for whoever wants to come that is a difference yeah yes and uh, the so like when you are working on a database people can tune some part of the database so you know that one section of database is visible more prominently than another section of the database that's how the the viewership on the instagram is managed correct correct and every country has a law india has a law where the the country data has to reside in india that's a law yeah i don't know whether it's enforced or not i do not know that to a large extent But- it is in india in india you can't play games because india is a major market that's right uh, but still it can be uh, the same campaign can be run outside india yeah it is and, and, it is done, and it is done and forwarded there is no doubt about it it is something which is common every election every country you have the same status you will find that happening in france in the next few days there will be a complaint of in, of influence it will happen already happening already happening yeah, so it's so yeah. something which you i mean there is no point crying over spilled milk because it's a reality yes you can curtail it and you must curtail it but you can't stop it that's right coming to next point okay this this is very well i think i understand what you're saying and for viewers also people understand that some things are beyond the control but at the same time we have to continue to understand why and how it can affect our viewpoints coming to the next point like the recent 
attacks on India in during the swearing in ceremony by Pakistan or or what the intelligence I don't know actually who is responsible. But what do you say? Why why these attacks were happening suddenly? See, uh, let's say one thing that there there have been a collection of four attacks in recent days. Uh huh. Okay. Now these four attacks have taken place. Uh, two of them they've been generally split in distances. The first major attack was during the swearing in, and that was also coinciding with the return of Shahbaz Sharif from China. Was it timed? Was it an opportunity presented? Is something which is very difficult to judge, and something which is which would not be very ideal to comment on without being aware. Yes, it happened on that day. It had these two coincidences, but at the same time, the vehicle moving, the people present, and they were able to engage. Was that a coincidence or was that planned with a date and time in mind? Right. Now, let's go further. These in areas. This is south of the Pir Panjal, where for quite some time the militancy had been curbed down. There have been incidents in Rajouri, Punch, so they have shifted inwards because the pressure of forces have increased in Rajouri, Punch. Now, terrorism is like water. You block it in one place, it will shift elsewhere. Now this is a group. Until the group is cleared, the group will keep moving, exploiting the jungles and the hills of the Pir Panjal. And it's not something. There are currently two groups operating from the two incidents that have happened at a distance. The third incident of Kathua was a freshly inducted group which got eliminated there itself. So that has closed one chapter. Here there are two groups operating. They possibly might have some amount of local support, but they've been operating. One of them has been operating for some time, possibly a year or maybe more. The other is recent, so it is going to take some time for that to be curbed. As Kashmir pressure built up, everything ended in Kashmir. Militancy reduced largely. It increased south of the Pir Panjal because the troop uh, reduction had taken place. Here, wherever there is an increase in troops. They tend to shift elsewhere, so it's a matter of time before it gets cleared. I don't think this is going to impact the forthcoming elections in JNK. The assembly elections are to take place. The process has begun. It will not have an impact there, but definitely it will be exploited politically. And since there have been nine deaths and forty injured, the government will take some sort of measures of its own to convey a firm message. That such action is unacceptable. What the government decides is something that only Delhi can say. But yes, there are options. You can look at stopping the ceasefire and reigniting. There's a lot of things that can happen. But that's a decision of Delhi, and which it will take in its own time, and it's something which will be intended to convey to across the border. That don't interfere. No, the Indian government has always been. I mean, if it was a U.S. government, and such incident would have happened from a foreign source, U.S. has much more violence per capita than anywhere in the world. We know that. That is a historical fact. It is. It has more people getting killed by guns and all kinds of homicides. But if any such incident in the U.S. happens with foreign government help, then it's a Classical case of war being declared on that country, that nation. See, that please, you have to realize that wherever U.S. is operated against, it's never operated against a nuclear power and someone who's got who is a neighbor, right? So what you are looking at is operating in Afghanistan, Iraq, or any of these places, not someone with an equal nuclear power. It is avoided challenging Iran militarily, right? That's a very safe place to play. So one has to be very clear on where and how are you acting. The U.S. would never retaliate against Russia or China. There's a difference. So let's keep it at that. Here, here there are two nuclear powers. You can push it to a level below the nuclear threshold. At the same time, prepare to escalate. 
Vizavis acting against, if India was to act against Nepal, Sri Lanka or Maldives, the ball game was very different. So you have to keep it at a level and at a certain logic. Right. When Pak hits back against Afghanistan, it's a different ball game. At the same time, when it tries it, when it wants to do it to India, it's a different ball game. So some reports even came whether Pakistan even has a nuclear weapons or not. This also has come. It's, it's evident and it's been provided with support. The US is aware. That's the time when the US closed his eyes and let them do it. Yes. So how do you see the overall situation then for Indian security and also the world security or the future of this thing? See, the fact is that this is a small uh, issue which with passage of time, you would find that the that it will get controlled and it's just two small groups which will be handled. You got to remember that a terrorist has to make one mistake to be wiped off by security forces. That's and true. that monitoring process is on. The benefit is the jungles and the mountains which are beneficial to the terrorist and not to security forces. Because he can always be there as an ambush. So that's going to take time. And we're not in a rush. You contain him, you're able to handle it. It will happen. The fact is that the government of India will send a message. How it does, when it does, will come. What about the the emotional trauma for people? that he no doubt that's there, But the government must not fall for the emotion and act in a rush. Which it will not. True, true. Because it's a, it's important to. Correct. It's a, it's a public sentiment is also very important is, for the government election, is, elections. Yeah. Also. Thank you so much, Ankur, for sharing all this information. Not at all, you. a total pleasure. Thank you. And uh, thank you all the viewers for watching this video. Do like, share, subscribe, and let us know your feedback. Namaste and thank you. Chalo, bye. Take care then. Take care. Jai Hind. Okay, Jane.